Dharma Talks by Mogik Sayadaw. 11th to the 12th of August 1962. Practicing for Dying. T1. Here Sayadaw gave two talks on Vedana and how to deal with them, especially near dying. We shouldn't waste our precious life as a human being by doing useless things and leading to painful rebirths. We should observe and study on people near dying. Even we ourselves had experienced more or less these things with our family members, or friends. It was quite painful to see people died painfully and in tragic ways. Their ways of dying were expressing their painful rebirths. The flood water of aging, sickness and death are waiting for us as arising. We need to prepare the Magan raft to cross over the ocean of Samsara to a safety place. He taught Vedananupasana for dealing with Tana. And he already had taught Sitanupasana for dealing with Dithi. Tana is sharper than Dithi. And Avijja is powerful than Tana. Eradication of Kalesa is from Dithi to Tana and Tana to Avijja successively. Dithi constructs the lower kanda of painful births. And Tana constructs higher kanda of human to Arupa Brahma worlds. Vedana can appear on the body and in the heart area, Hadaya Vafu. It's important to observe at the right places. It's not a Parina theoretical knowledge and without this, it can't do Tarana Parina development with contemplation. There are three kinds of Vedana. Sukha, Dukkha, Apekha appear internally and externally of the body. Usually we only use Sukha and Dukkha in our daily life language, and not including Apekha. In Vipassana contemplation if not observing at the right places and Nibbana not arises. It will be impossible if the objects and mind, Nana, are not in accordance with each other. It can't cut off DA process. Sayadaw explained the Vipassana process very simple and clear. He placed serially five small betel nuts on the table in front of him. The first to the third nuts were representing mundane path knowledges, all a discerning Anaka, Ude Abhaya, Banga and Nibida Nana. The fourth is the path knowledge not seeing Anaka anymore and instead their ending or Nibbana. It can't kill Kalesa perfectly yet, Anasaya. It's only the seed of Arya. The first to third knowledges are still the worldling mind. The fourth knowledge is Arya mind. From one to four are ceasing successively, and complete with the eight path factors. The knowledges following after the four are also seeing Nibbana. The fifth is seeing Nibbana and also killing Tana, i.e., the fruition knowledge kills Anasaya. The knowledges of one to three are very important, because it has connection with development, Bhavatabha. The fourth and fifth knowledges are arising naturally, the outcome of one, two and three knowledges. The one with the ordinary Dana and Sila is a sleeping person. It is in sleep without preparing the Magan raft and doing things in accordance with Tana. This is sleeping with Avijja and Tana. Tana is sharper than Dithi. Avijja is sharper than Tana. During the time of Vedana Pakaya Tana, feeling conditions of craving, he was still a Bodhisattva. Wanting to become a Buddha, the Bodhisattva was contemplating Vedana until it became ending. Gave instruction on Vedana. Vedana arises on the body and also in the mind. Contemplate it at the arising place. As an example, on the body Sukha Vedana arises and in the mind also happiness arises. If arising on the body, then contemplate on the body. In the mind also in the same way. It can't attain Nibbāna if the contemplation is not at the right place. It means the object of contemplation and contemplative mind are not at the same place. 
It also means DA process can't be cut off. Three inside knowledges must arise. 1. Uday Abhaya Nana, knowledge of rise and fall. 2. Banga Nana, knowledge of dissolution. 3. Nibida Nana, knowledge of disenchantment. All three of them are contemplating of impermanence. 1 to 3 are the knowledges of a worldling. All are the path factors of a worldling. 5 Magan, known as all are in dissolution. After 3 ceasing, one does not see the dissolution. At the ending of them, see Nibbana arising. It's the number 4 mind, i.e., the path knowledge. It is seeing Nibbana, but still can't kill Kalesa yet. The fourth not see impermanence, but still can't kill the latent Kalesa. The fourth is the seed of Arya. From one to four can't cut off Kalesa are the same and only different in views. After that Magan Raft will appear. Four arises for the cutting off the worldling status, not for the Kalesa. After the four ceases and the eight path factors appear. It's number five and also sees Nibbana. It needs to ask who shows Nibbana to him. Four showing it and five seeing it. Four is the cause and five is the result. Five is seeing Nibbana and killing Tanna. Four only seeing it and can't kill Tanna. One to three are seeing Anika but Tanna not dies. Four is seeing Nibbana and Tanna also not dies. Five seeing Nibbana and Tanna dies. If one arises must leading to five and it's sure. The task is finished with these five points. The Buddha Dharma is clear cut and in details, and not like other teachings with uncertainty and walking in the darkness. T2. Death and birth, QT and Patisandhi, are only far away from each other in realms of existence, e.g., dies as human and reborn as Devata. As Dharma, they are very close to each other. After death and hell birth arises, as an example for painful birth. This dying kama is near to death. This near kama is making this birth. The kama you had done before such as building pagoda and monastery were quite far away. Therefore, the near kama gives the result. The good kamas of the past had done before not arise at the time of death. So, it's called Asana Kama, Maranasana Kama, Near Death Kama. Who has done it? At near dying, it's overwhelming with Vedana and Dukkha Vedana is unbearable. The mind also becomes unbearable. You have to separate Vedana with Anatta. Instead, we combine Vedana with Atta. For that I want you do the contemplation from now on so that at the time of death, you'll know that it's Vedana or the impermanence of Anatta. I want you all to practice hard earlier to overcome Vedana and seeing their vanishing of Anatta. At near death it becomes Anatta mind. Anatta is a knowledge. After that death comes and becomes Arahant at the same time. Even not become an Arahant, after death to a blissful birth. If you can't bear Dukkha Vedana and near death, the five mind moments of dosa arise, as anguished state. Death and dosa mind are near to each other at that time. Therefore, the wholesome kamas you have done before can't give the result. Instead the near kama gives the result. It's called asana kama, near death kama. Therefore, it needs to contemplate Vedana to become Anatta. Sayadaw gave the example of the Asana Kama with the older bulls near the entrance of a cow pen. The older bulls come out first when the cow pen is opened in the early morning because they are near the entrance. Here older bulls are Asana Kama and the entrance is death. Other habitual Kama, Asanaka Kama, are far away but they'll give the results later. 
Now at this time you're in good health, and with contemplation to know the impermanence of Vedana. Later, if Vedana come, you will see the vanishing of it. And you will die as a Magga, Fala person because you discern impermanence with the contemplation at near death. It's a great loss if you do not exercise for dying. We should take this point very serious. For someone in practice, even not becomes an arahant and near death it can be. Why is that? Because near death has strong determination. At that time you will not pay attention to family matters and has strong effort. Some disciples of Sayadaw cut off communication with their family members when they were near death. They shut themselves in their rooms, listening to Sayadaw's talks and contemplating their candors and died. You will encounter with the worst situation if you are taking it easy and relax now. With the practicing Kama at near death, it's also these Vedana. The practice Kama before death was just normal desire, Chanda, Varya and Panna. Now at near death, the Chanda, Varya and Panna are becoming stronger, because it's the last hope. As like Sitanupasana is important, in daily life, and near the entrance of death, Vedananupasana is also important. Vedana arising is anatta and vanishing is also anatta. They are arising and vanishing in accordance with their nature. The mind is seeing anatta and becomes asana kama, and then becomes arahant, if not and takes rebirth in the blissful plane. Sayadaw told the differences between human beings and Devata. Devata doesn't have bile, phlegm, mucus and blood like human being. So, the mind of a Devata is bright and clear. Human has a lot of phlegm and mucus full of the volume of a condensed milk which can affect the mind base. In the celestial realm and continues the contemplation, with a blip discerns impermanence. It doesn't have any obstruction because Devata body doesn't have phlegm, mucus, bile, blood, etc. There is only one mind separated, i.e., between death and birth, then. It can enter the stream instantly. You can remember your merit only without the coarse Vedana, i.e., painful feeling, otherwise you can't if it's coarse. Now, you know that people not doing the practice will be in danger. I am telling you clearly that by doing the practice will be successful, including the benefit and the faults without it. But near dying by reciting, the metta sutta is impossible because can't hear any more, depend on the situations. Near death mostly dukkha vedana arises. One dies with anger or anguish without the habitual kama. Sayadaw gave the story of the thirty monks at the time of the Buddha to illustrate the benefit of habitual kama. Thirty monks were practicing in a forest. A tiger came and took for a monk every night. At last they knew the situation and they had to alarm each other if the tiger came back again. It came back again and dragged a monk away. The other monks were chasing to save the victim until they couldn't follow any more. They reminded the victim to rely on his practice. The victim overcame the Dukkha Vedana because of his habitual practice, Kama, and became Arahant before passing away. At the time of seeing Anika even Vedana not appears in the yogi mind. Separate Vedana with contemplation and discern Anaka, Anatta. All conditioned phenomena are Anaka and Dukkha. All Dharmas are Anatta. Do you still see Vedana? You only see the vanishing. Later he became an Arahant before passing away. It was not by Vedana, but with Anaka, Dukkha and Anatta. You will see this only if you are practicing now. One will die with anger or anguish if no contemplation, whereas he will have the path factors with contemplation. 
You have to prepare for it if you don't want to die with an unpleasant death. At near death, you can't rely on other things. Before that, you have to prepare for the Anaka, Dukkha and Anatta. Near death, even not die with anguish and with the attachment to family members and wealth becomes Peter, hungry ghost. Die with delusion of unclear mind becomes animal. You have to suffer by the arrangement of Asana Kama. Vedana are killing the whole world. With stupidity, the whole world is chasing the killers out of love. Therefore, it's very important. Near death is overwhelming by Vedana. So, don't take it lightly. With it the wholesome mind can't arise. Someone has the preparation and it doesn't have power over him. Even it can send to Nibbana. Vedana is also a nutriment, Ahara. The Buddha taught four kinds of nutriments. These are, one fasa, contact, two satana volition, three consciousness, four foods. Another meaning of Ahara is the cause carries the result with it. One to three are mind nutriments, and four is physical. With fasa different types of Vedana arise. Satana conditions rebirth, linking consciousness, one of the important causes. Here consciousness is, rebirth, consciousness and it conditions mind, matter, nama, rupa. It increases new matters with foods. One frees from samsara with clear knowing of these four aharas. One who can abandon foods becomes anagaman. Furthermore he becomes arahant if overcoming fasa, vedana. One can abandon tana and becomes arahant if seeing the faults of satana, kama. It has the danger of contact with sense objects with fasa existing. It has the danger of becoming bhava, while satana exists. It has the danger of connecting mind, matter when consciousness exists. We have to eat foods to free from the other three dangers. Abandon tana which we are conditioned by them. This is from Sayadaw Dr. Nandamala Bivamsa's talk. So, we're alive with Vedana. How hell beings survive in hell? Nobody comes to feed them. They're suffering with Dukkha Vedana. Their Vedana are Ahara. At the time of the Buddha there were large Peters. Their bodies were as high as a palm tree. Their mouths were tiny as a needle hole. It made by Kamas. Kamaniyama Asinti Yo. The law of Kama is unthinkable. They didn't have the Kama to eat foods. They were alive with Vedanahara. In one of his talks also referring it as Kamahara. It includes mind if you contemplate Vedana, and vice versa. Then, contemplate the one more distinctive to you, and it's easy to catch on. In regards to Vedana, when it's pleasant, oh, it's good. When painful, ah, it's pain. Sayadaw gave some examples of them. With Vedana, it starts becoming uncomfortable. It does not become severe, i.e., painful feeling, if you can contemplate it. This point is important for dealing with Vedana. See the following. You contemplate the beginning of Vedana and big Vedana not arises. Sitting and watching the in-breath and out-breath, the Vedana will arise. It's not there when you observe it because contemplative mind can arise only after it's passing away. Vedana is arising and vanishing, kaya, vaya. Contemplative mind is maga. After that, three kinds of Vedana arise accordingly. You can contemplate at every time of its arising, and it becomes kaya, vaya, anaka and maga. Vanishing is as an object benefiting the Magga. With watching and observing, Anaka, Magga are arising accordingly. Dharma talks by Mogik Sayadaw, the 23rd of August 1962.
Seeing Nibbana with the pure mind. You must know about Nibbana in practicing Dharma to Nibbana. To know about the place of the destination and try to practice for arriving there. If not, you will not try for it. King Melinda wanted to know the following six questions and he asked then. Nagasena. One phenomena arisen by Kama. Two phenomena arisen by causes. Three phenomena arisen by temperature. Utu. Four phenomena not arisen by Kama. Five phenomena not arisen by causes. Six phenomena not arisen by Utu. One Satana volition. Kama causes living beings to arise. Kama causes mind and matter to arise. Two seeds, trees and forest fire arisen by causes, fire, seeds, three temperature causes earth, water, air and mountain to arise. Sky and Nibbana phenomena are not arisen by Kama, causes and temperature. Nibbana is not the path of Kama. You have to remember it as the path of knowledge, Nana, instead. Sayadaw made a critical view on people asking Nibbana with prayers and merits. If you try to attain Nibbana with Kama will not get it. I want you to try it with Nana. You can't connect it with cause and effect. Therefore every day I am talking to you searching with knowledge. You must regard knowledge, Nana, as the main point, factor. Nibbana is the way with the path factors of right view, Samadhiti Magan. Nibbana is Nana way. Therefore the Buddha was searching Nibbana with knowledge and leaving Kama behind. You have your own aging and death. Can you separate aging and death with you? Then, Nagasena explained Nibbana to King Melinda. It's not arising at the present. If arising at the present and everyone will see it. Also it not had arisen. This is not the kind of Dharma arisen by others. Not the past Dharma, and not the present Dharma, also not a future Dharma. Some people makes prayers such as, May we realize Nibbana in the end of our lives. Sayadaw corrected their mistakes. The ending of becoming never happens without practice. This is the same as, may we never realize Nibbana. Don't put the words of at the end of my life in your prayers. It should be only, may my practice supports the realization of Nibbana. You have to make it yourself if you want to end it. It is wrong if you take it as it will end by itself. It will end if you want to end it by practice and meeting with a spiritual friend, Kalinamata. You have to correct your traditional view. It will never end if you leave it by itself, i.e., it's important of the practice and not only rely on Kama. It's not a kind of Dharma made by other. Therefore the Buddha said, teaching people is my task. Practicing is your duty. Nibbana is free from three periods of time. Had arisen, is arising and will arise. If it's free from the periods of time, should we take it as not existing? We can't know it with the five sense doors of the eye, body, etc., among the six senses doors. We can only know and see with the mind door. Do you satisfy with the saying of looking with the mind? Sleeping and thinking are also the mind. So you can ask me as does every mind can see Nibbana? With a clear question and will appreciate the answer. You can see it with the pure mind, whereas you can't if it's not pure. Only with the mind not mixed with Kalesa. Your mind is still not pure if you're still not seeing Nibbana. If practicing, we are the disciples of the Arya. Don't mix up with the five hindrances. Knowledge, Nana, becomes quite sharp with the discerning of impermanence and disenchantment. But it's still in the asava of the sense sphere. Vipassana knowledges are still mixed with kalesa, still not free from the sphere of asava. 
There are three types of mind. Mano, one mano mixed with Kalesa, two nana mind, in the sphere of Kalesa, three mano free from Kalesa. The mind will see Nibbana when it thoroughly penetrated Dukkha and not wanting of it. It will be free from Kalesa, and seeing Nibbana only when Magga Chitta arises. Even the arising of insight knowledges are still under the influence of ignorance. The pure nana is Lokutara nana. It's still not pure if not arriving to the path knowledge. It's still not pure after the disenchantment and not ending of it. So this is about pure knowledge and not kama. At the time the mind is pure will see Nibbana. This is the thing of a noble person, Aryan. So it's free from the three periods of time. Today we know about ourselves. Nibbana does not accept someone who has the leprosy of Kalesa. People don't want to go Nibbana. Instead they are wanting to be near the fire. They have the Kalesa leprosy so that they can't close to Nibbana. This simile came from the Magandya Sutta. Nibbana has nothing to do with the place. The mind is pure at the time can see it at anywhere and at any time. Purity and impurity of the mind depend on sharp or not sharp knowledges. So insight knowledges arise for this process. Also has connection with far or not far from Kalesa. In the Dharmakaka Pavatana Sutta, the first discourse mentioned three knowledges, one Udayabhaya Nana, or Yathabhuta Nana, the knowledge of rise and fall two Nibida Nana, knowledge of disenchantment three Magga Nana, the path knowledge. It had arranged for Kalesa. One knowing Anaka, Dukkha and Anatta are not yet disenchanting to the mind and body. Two is the knowledge of the middle level. Three seeing Nibbana with the freedom from the sphere of Dukkha. One and two are Sankare Pasati. Seeing Sankara Dharma three is Nibbanamagasa, Nibbanamphalasa, seeing Nibbana with path and fruition knowledges. Dharma talks by Mogik Sayadaw the 29th of August 1962. Two ways of dying. Listening to Dharma talks is for the freedom of death. This was true for Sayadaw and his disciples. Is it true for all Buddhists? Some Buddhists expounded new ideas and philosophy for the becoming, bhava, tana. During the listening of talk, we are moving towards death. I'll teach you the way of dying told the story of Ven. Faguna, the sick monk at near death, Kanda accepts everything which you all fear of. Therefore, it becomes worsening if you're staying longer with it. All Dukkha are accumulated with it. Someone not knowing the truth is a crazy and blind person. Do you still have desire for this useless Kanda? Sayadaw mentioned some problems of the Kanda. It's not beneficial to look after the candor. It's only moving towards aging, sickness and death. It is Dukkha Saka to collect wealth and other things for this candor without any benefit. But it's never arising to our mind as enough is enough. Then, Faguna died as an anagaman, non-returner. His eye, etc., Bodily faculties were clear and bright and looked like an alive person. There are two ways of dying. Right pointing arrow one die with listening to talks two contemplation on one's candor and die. You have to listen to the kind of Dharma talks to understand Dukkha Saka. This is very important point to keep in mind because then Sariputta gave a talk to his friend the Brahman who was dying with Samatha and reborn as a Brahma god. Later he had to go there again and gave another talk on truth, Saka Dharma. He also gave Saka Dharma to Anathapindika at his deathbed. It should be this kind of talks. If the dying person had time and listened to the Buddha's talk or one of the disciples' talk, here then. 
Faguna listened to the Buddha's talk. If you don't have time for these and contemplate by yourself near death. Painful feeling will usually arise at near death dukkha. Contemplate it as impermanent, oppressive, dukkha saka kanda and follow with magan. Therefore, it is dying with maga in this way. Someone in pain is the nature of dukkha vedana. With the arising and vanishing that vedana disappears. Vedana is anaka and contemplative mind is anaka nana. It's not easy to listen to talk near death. You have to look for a person to give talk. Also he must be a person can give saka dharma. Nowadays is easy because we can access recorded tapes on dharma. Some of Mogik Sayadaw's close disciples were dying by listening to his recorded tapes. In Sayadaw's biography, once time he mentioned to a disciple the benefit of recorded tapes and recorder. If we can use it properly even it can send us to Nibbana, and blissful births. Using it wrongly send us to hells, animals and ghosts realms. Nowadays media are choosing the second way. Doors to hells, animals and ghost realms are opening to most of us. Therefore the best way of dying is with one's own contemplation or practice. King Melinda asked, Can all attain Nibbana? The answer was not all. The one who can attain Nibbana is. One what should have to be known with penetration must penetrate it. What should have to know with analysis has to analyze. 2. What should have to abandon has to abandon. 3. What should must realize has to realize. 4. What should have to develop has to develop. All these are about the noble truths. One who knows the truths will attain Nibbana. This is no. One point. There only is zero left if you don't even try one of them. And then I myself can't help you. If you try one Dukkha Saka, all are included. This was from Saka Samyutta, the Magan analyze it as Dukkha Saka. So it includes Magga Saka. Magga arises and Samadaya ceases. Kadanirodho Nibbanam the cessation of Kanda is Nibbana. And Nirodha Saka appears. Note. On sickness and dying here we can see two talks on dying. These were given over a month before his death. These are good for reflection on sickness and dying food for the heart. In Sayadaw's last year of life, i.e., 1962, his style of talks was changing slightly. Most of them had the sense of strong samvega on aging, sickness, death and sufferings. He was very concerned about the Dharma welfare of his listeners. Always urging them to practice diligently to transcend Dukkha and there was not much time for them. It was also a hint for his disciples of his passing away in the near future. I had seen a Chinese documentary film on sickness and dying of old people. There were two groups of them, ordinary people and Buddhist yogis. The first group had no Dharma knowledge and practice. When they were close to death, or at dying with chronic diseases such as incurable cancer, which made them suffered a lot physically and mentally. They were straggling for their lives with difficult breathing and so forth. It is very painful for your heart to see their difficult conditions and suffering. The scene of old Buddhist yogis made your heart feeling with joy and inspiration. Their dying and death were quite remarkable. Some of them were in sitting postures and passed away calmly. It seemed to be they were like mature yogis. Some of them were in lying postures and with the smile on their faces which like in Sayadaw's talk, dying with the smile and grimace. I don't know their ways of practice, and it could be from pure land system. Among these yogis I recognize one of them. She was Miss Song Kue Lin, who died in 2010 at the age of 50 with severe cancer of the womb. 
I had listened to her video lecture on her tragic story. It resulted from her over-sensual pleasure with men. When she found out about her deadly cancer, by then, she had already had relationship with more than 40 men. Everything had its causes. When she was young in her teens she was influenced by polluted media, such as films, TV, etc. She was wrongly educated by these negative media and followed the wrong way of life. Later she married a man and has a son with him. This man later ended up in a prison. The son also born with mental disability. Because of her terminal cancer, she only had three months to live. She also had an old mother to look after. I can feel and understand her miserable conditions with sufferings. We can use Dharma to contemplate and reflect on her life. In the Mangala Sutta, Discourse on Blessings, the first two blessings were, not consort with the fools and consort with the wise. Her life of degradation began with a life of consorting with fools, and here that includes unhealthy media and men. Here we can see the penetrative wisdom of the Buddha. With this kind of polluted mind and actions she could never meet a good husband and gave birth to an abnormal son were nothing strange about it. It happened accordingly to the natural law of mind and kama actions, kama, negative forces only attract negative phenomena. Every living being carrying wholesome and unwholesome kamic energies with them in the round of existence. The last three months of her life were giving her the opportunity to change its destiny towards some direction. In 2010 a small group of people came to her N.E. province and gave some public lectures for a few days in the provincial city. All of these personal lectures were based on personal experiences, knowledge of Chinese culture and moral education that have dramatically changed the lives of these people. Fortunately, she came to these talks and introduced herself to the group, becoming one of the educators herself. These people were from all walks of life, some doctors, scholars, businessmen and women, etc. This association with the wise changed her life of three months. Her mind and actions were in the right direction which alleviates some of her mental pain. In this group there were some who highly educated with other skills helping her with the disease and mental pain. Even her physical pain and the cancer situation was feeling a little better. They introduced her to the pure land practice and with it, she ended her life wisely in a very short period. Some of her practice were confession, repentance, service and dharma practices. At last, she died peacefully and her physical condition was not looked like a patient at all. Her face was calm, and the body limbs were soft and pliable. All these were the signs of good rebirth. There are two important blessings which changed her miserable life into a peaceful ending. These are consorting with the wise and directing oneself rightly. Without association with wise and compassionate Kalyana Mitas, her life ending could be very miserable, and it would lead to the bad destination. Aging, sickness and death are our great teachers and divine messengers. Here divine messengers refer to the Devaduta Sutta, Minnesota 130, Devaduta Sutta, Majima Nikaya. True wisdom and compassion arise only by understanding Dukkha profoundly. Wisdom and compassion are inseparable like two sides of a coin. The art of living and dying are very important for everyone. We can only get this kind of precious education from the Buddha Dharma. Everyone should train themselves with the Dharma, otherwise we will all regret it later. Dharma talks by Mogik Sayadaw no date noted. Dependency is wavering. It mentioned that someone had to fulfill these two factors if he wanted to enter the stream in the Petakapadesa text, an old commentary, 
one listening to Saka Dharma, and two after that, having right attention, such as materiality, feeling, consciousness, dukkha saka, etc. There are two ways of knowing the truth. Knowing by hearing from a teacher's teachings, and practicing accordingly to the teaching and knowing directly, making decision by oneself. There are also two kinds of right attention. Right attention from the teacher's teachings, and right attention come from direct practice. Decision comes from right attention and with the practice will realize the path knowledge. By knowing thoroughly as real Dukkha Saka and Dukkha disappears, Kanda disappears. You know Dukkha exists and also not exists. It's penetrating Dukkha and realizing the cessation. The Four Noble Truths will be completed only one can make one's own decision. Heavenly mansions in the celestial realm, hell fire and walks in the hell has arisen are waiting for us. Here Dukkha ceases and all these things ready for us are disappeared. With Dukkha ceases and the disappearance of the results, these are happening at the same time. So you ought to do this task. If you still don't arrive to this end of knowledge and shouldn't relax or feel safe. We have uncountable wholesome and unwholesome cameras of our own. The untrained mind usually takes pleasure in unwholesome things. The defiled mind only does defiled things. Therefore we can justify our wholesome and unwholesome, merits and demerits. Closing square bracket. You have to demolish the four painful rebirths from here. You must take it seriously for your own matter. You have a lot of your own debts. You are still immersed in pleasures. What kind of people you are. The Buddha taught the way to Nibbana. Tana and Dithi are connecting to each other. As example, my son, etc. It's in the state of wavering if you always have dependency on Tana and Dithi. Sayadaw gave the following example. Orchids grow on a rock. With the earthquake. The rock is shaking and the orchids also. In the Chanavada Sutta, Ven. Mahakunda, Saraputta's younger brother, reminded Ven. Chana who was very ill and wanted to commit suicide. He told to Ven. Chana, the Buddha taught the monks constantly giving close attention to this point. It was wavering for someone who had dependency whereas it was no wavering for someone who was independent. Without wavering, there was tranquility and no inclination. Without inclination, there is no coming and going, nor passing away and being reborn. There was neither here nor beyond nor in between these two. This was the end of Dukkha. Closing square bracket. Our candors connect with Tana and Dithi, e.g., if you're sick. The kanda is always changing and perishing. If you always have affection to the kanda with tana and dithi and it's always connecting. These two dharmas are very important. I.e., tana, dithi and kanda. You're very pleasing with the wavering. There is no wavering if kanda and tana, dithi are not connected. How to do it for not having wavering? By watching and observing the candor, you'll see its unstoppable perishing. If you see impermanence, tana, dithi is falling off. Tana and dithi are the closest to our candor. Vipassana is watching and observing the nature of the candor for what is happening to it. If it's rising and falling, just know it as rising and falling. If it's in Dukkha, just know it as in Dukkha. If it's showing not yours, just know it as not yours. Watching and observing it like a stranger, alien, you will know the anatta nature. Someone not in wavering, mind and body are peaceful and he is free from Kalesa. You will be free from Kalesa by knowing its nature thoroughly. Doing the sitting and observing do you need to be taught. 
watching and observing with Nana, the candor will tell its nature. You will understand Dukkha nature with a lot of contemplation. It has Dukkha and only tells Dukkha to you about Dukkha.